me up. Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for Friday, February 22nd, 2018. This is episode 54. And today we're going to be talking about monitoring cryptocurrencies using Microsoft Flow. So just a standard disclaimer, uh, while I am a Microsoft employee, the opinions expressed in the following content are my own. And also since I am talking about cryptocurrencies, I want to ensure that people No, that this is not financial advice. There's no warranties about the solution I'm going to discuss. And this video is truly for educational purposes only. For those of you who may not be interested in cryptocurrencies and how you can monitor them, I do want to call out a few different patterns or techniques that I use inside of this example, which do have broad applicability. Uh, We do have a lot of questions that come in related to do until. So we'll walk through that. Really, this whole solution can be used in any polling alert scenarios where on a fixed interval, you need to be able to go out and call some sort of an endpoint and then make a decision about whether or not you need to respond and at some point break the condition or break your loop in order to proceed. We're going to cover that. And lastly, another highly requested question is dealing with dates and how you can actually go ahead and perform date comparisons. So we're also going to take care of that as well as part of this example. So if you're new to cryptocurrency, um, something that you quickly discover is how volatile the market is. Chart represents is the overall market cap for cryptocurrencies that are being tracked by coinmarketcap.com. Now what I've done here is I've taken essentially a year snapshot and we can see the rise and fall of the total market cap and then also the volume. In its peak, it the market cap of cryptocurrencies reached more than $750 billion. But we can see it also retracted back down to roughly $300 billion in the month of February. And since that time, it's now increased a little bit, but then it's pulled back once again. And just to add some additional data points, here is what the market cap looks like for Bitcoin, the most popular or the most valuable cryptocurrency that exists. And we can see its market cap over a period of three months. So here back in late November, it was hovering just above $120 billion USD. It peaked just under $300 billion in December, on December 18th roughly, and then followed by a sharp fall. And then it's really traded sideways Uh, for most of the time since, but we have seen some significant drops, including mid-January and early February, but we've seen some recovery coming back. But the point of all this is cryptocurrencies are extremely volatile, and it can be difficult to stay on track of it. Obviously, that there's uh, lots of money to be gained and lost in cryptocurrency, so a lot of people will sit on their computers or their mobile device and are constantly refreshing the screen, um, perhaps hitting F5, in order to get an updated view of the crypto market. Now, this isn't overly practical, especially if you have a job and want to focus, continue to focus on doing your job. So enter Microsoft Flow, which will monitor our crypto for us. And what this solution entails is we're going to go ahead and use the Flow mobile application. We're going to use a button flow. And we're then going to select our cryptocurrency that we want to track. And we'll provide a low threshold value and a high threshold value. Then in turn, our flow is going to run and it's going to run inside of a loop. And it's going to go ahead and make a call out to an API hosted by CryptoCompare.com. Now, CryptoCompare isn't an actual um, exchange, but many exchanges do provide APIs for all of their different operations, including the ability to get price, but they also provide the ability to buy and sell tokens as well. 
we're going to exclude buying and selling for the purpose of this demo. We're going to focus just on pricing, but this solution could be extended in order to include buys and sells, which in essence, you're creating your own trading bot at that point. So certainly possible. Now, one thing that we do have to manage is that flows have a life of up to 30 days. So we're going to go ahead and manage that life cycle of the flow. And we'll actually check for how much time uh, we have within our flow and send out a reminder as well, indicating that a person should create a new alert subscription as this one is about to end. But under normal circumstances, we will take the symbol in from the mobile app and we'll pass that as a parameter to crypto compare. And then we're going to get a response for what is the current price. And the current price will be represented in multiple different currencies, including its value in Bitcoin, in Ethereum, in the USD, in the Euro, and in the Canadian dollar. If our threshold is broken, either we've gone under our threshold or the price has gone over our threshold, we'll go ahead and send out a text or mobile notification indicating this. And really, it becomes an opportunity. It becomes an opportunity to sell. Uh, perhaps, you know, your coin has sort of exceeded your upper threshold and you feel it's time to get out. Um, or perhaps you've been wanting to watch a coin and you're only willing to pay X for it. And now the price is below X. So now might be a good opportunity to go ahead and buy that coin. So let's go ahead and jump into the demo. So before we go and run the mobile application, I wanted to just go through the solution itself. So we're going to edit our flow. It is a manual trigger. I'm going to include a list of different coins that we can select. And then we're going to have two, in, two additional inputs, one for our low value and one for our high value. Next, we're going to initialize some variables. We're going to have a Boolean value called is threshold broken. We will use this as part of our do until. And essentially, when this value gets changed to true, that'll be an indication that we should actually break our loop. I'm also going to include two variables to track our times. And we'll use this to determine whether or not our flow is about to turn into a pumpkin because we're nearing our 30 day interval or 30 day threshold for how long a flow can, can stay alive. And we'll go ahead and achieve this by using the ticks, the ticks function. And the ticks function is represents 100 nanoseconds since January 1st, 1601. And we will pass UTC now into that function, which will return a very, very large number for us. And then what we'll go ahead and do is do the same thing, but we will do it 30 days from now. And then what we'll do is we will actually check to see whether or not this value, the current ticks is approaching the expiration ticks. So here we're into our do until loop, and we will go ahead and run this flow or this loop until our threshold value is equal to true. At that point, we will go ahead and stop. There's also some other limits here as well where you can count the number of times that this loop can also run before it will exhaust itself. In this case, we're going to run it 720 times um, with a timeout of every hour. Um, so this way, we also have 30 days before that expires. Uh, next up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to call our API. And in this case, we'll pass in the symbol from our mobile flow app. And then these are all of the different values we want our currency to be returned in. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, USD, Euro, and Canadian dollar. Since this is a raw API call, we're going to go ahead and parse the result so that we have a typed response that we can actually use. And really, in order to achieve this, I just went into Postman. I can go ahead and call the API. In this case, it'll be for Ethereum. And I get a sample message back. Now, we want to check if the flow is about to expire. So what we're going to go ahead and do is subtract 
our using our variables, we're going to take the upper number, which is our flow expiry ticks, and we're going to subtract from it our current ticks. And we do reset our ticks value below, um, so it isn't just a static value either. If it's less than this number, which is really four hours. So if our flow runs and it is now going to expire within four hours, we will send out a notification indicating that our alert subscription is going to end in less than four hours. But here is the last price for our particular symbol. And we'll then set our threshold is broken to true, which will break our loop. In the event that our ticks, our current ticks value is greater than four hours, we will go ahead and perform a check. Now, in this case, we will go ahead and see if our value, our upper threshold value, is greater than our response in USD, or we will check to see if our low threshold value is lower than the current value in USD. If it is, that means our threshold has been broken. We will then go ahead and send out a mobile notification indicating the symbol, um, what our threshold values are. And then in addition, we will return the, the price in USD, CAD, and Bitcoin. We will also at this point terminate our notification because really if you've already exceeded that, there's no point keeping it alive. You probably wanna go ahead and create a new one. Uh, what we will also do is um, we will sleep for 15 minutes. And the idea of this is that we will, before we enter the loop again, we don't want to DOS this particular API and get throttled. So we're just going to have a reasonable sleep period uh, for that. And then lastly, we'll update our current ticks. So that's what the solution looks like. Um, let's go ahead and run this. So we're going to do this in two ways. First off, we will kick it off from the web browser. So we'll go ahead and hit run now. We can choose our symbol. In this case, we will go ahead and use Ethereum and we will create uh, a relevant or realistic threshold here. So it's $856 USD currently. So I think the low we could say is 800 and the high, maybe it's 915. We'll go ahead and we'll kick that off. So obviously we can't, the markets don't move that quickly, nor do I have the power to control them. Uh, so let's go ahead and we will set an unrealistic threshold here, which will allow us to kick this off quickly so that you get a sense of how this actually works. Okay, so I've got Air Server loaded. I'm on my Flow mobile app. Here it is, it's called Middleware Friday Crypto Watcher. Let's go ahead and check Ethereum. And in this case, we said it was 856 was the last price. So let's just go ahead and set a value of 860. The idea is that this should trigger right away. I will say the upper value is 920. And we'll go ahead and hit done. So we can see that the flow has started. And sure enough, there we go. We get our mobile notification indicating that our threshold has been broken. So hopefully you found that demo entertaining. And uh, even if you're not in crypto, I hope that you learned uh, a few things, a few tricks, a few patterns that you can use for other notification scenarios. So thanks for watching Middleware Friday for another episode. Uh, Steph Jan is up next week. He's actually in Tokyo this weekend running his marathon. So all the best to him. Thank you to BizTuck360 for being a great partner of the show. Um, if you haven't caught it, BizTuck360 announced that the next edition of Integrate is upon us in June in London. So go ahead and look for details on their website. Also, the MVP Summit is coming up here in early March. So Steph Jan will be in town in Seattle. And we are planning to record a couple sessions as well. Um, so if there's any sort of topics that you'd like us to, to chat about, let us know. Obviously, we can't share NDA info 
but it is an opportunity to catch up with other MVPs and product group members as well. So feel free to send those suggestions along. Thanks and have a great week. And we'll see you again on Middleware Friday.